Yeah, I think f from my experience, you know, wherever you come from, for instance, I'm a Chinese, you know, immigrant or, you know, a writer writing in a second language. I think people tend to have certain anticipation or expectation and they they make you into a spokesperson, you know, whether you like it or not. And I think that is something I push against because that interferes with my independence as a writer. And I don't represent, obviously, I don't represent any country. And if you look at American writers, nobody asks an American writer to represent America. But if you come from China, if you come from, you know, another group, people would say you have you have the obligation. And I don't think that's my concern. I have obligation to human beings, my characters. So that's all I care about. I do think, you know, I think that's a good question. I think writers have obligations first and foremost to their characters. You know, as a fiction writer, I think I want to write about my characters in the most humane manner and they have to be more complex or you know than people would think say you know i write about a chinese immigrant someone says oh i've never looked at chinese Im immigrant that way i didn't realize a chinese immigrant can have a internal you know life and that's that's the thing we push against is we actually make people look like people we make characters you know have a deep interior life that's my obligation and and i i like what you said about you know pushing against authority and i think sometimes you have to push against a collective voice you know how people i talk a little bit about public language i think a writer has to p push against that public language because it's a shortcut to many things and it simplifies a lot of situations <music> We forget, you know, anytime we put ourselves into a category, we use, this, you know, a label, we are, you know, there are two, two things that happen at the same time. One is we make connections to other people, but two, actually, we, we lose certain individuality. We want to become part of something. That's important, but we also have to maintain our individuality. And so, I, my thinking is, in, in writing, in literature, you know, we cannot group people together all the time. We have to have them, you know, fight against that grouping activity. I like the theme at home everywhere, and that's how I often look at my characters and my own life, you know, I, again, this is like talking about stereotypical immigrant story. And someone told me once that I don't write typical or stereotypical immigrant story because this person explained to me, he said, all your characters can have a good life in America. They don't struggle, except they do struggle internally. And that is how I look at it. It's they could have a, had a good life. They have made a home in America, but there are other things in life that make us less comfortable. But that's not only from external pressure, external experience. It's also internal. So I like I like the theme because it it's it's it, there's a conflict in that theme. It's interesting, I think sometimes a character's memory takes place and or takes over your own memory, which is actually a good problem for a fiction writer because you don't want your memory to be the do dominating narrative. You don't want your memory to direct the characters. So in a way, my memory only serves as a seed. And when the characters start their own memories, that's you know, when I leave, I narrator or the, the author leave the stage and to let them live. And that, that is a good experience for me. You know, 
I can talk about it from different angles. You know, I came from you know, an unpublished writer to a published writer. Part of it is just perseverance, right? You, you, you can't really give up or feeling, you can't just feel discouraged by one rejection, two rejections. People get rejected all the time. The other thing is, you know, this comes from working in a magazine, in a literary magazine. I think people forget that people, like, the magazine, people within a magazine, they do pay attention to talents. But sometimes they can't just take a piece, but they would make notes. And there was this young uh, writer from Nigeria, and he, I worked with a public space, and he started to submit when he was a teenager. And we always kept a note of this person. Every time we saw his submission, we would read and we would note. And eventually, he got a fellowship from the magazine. And eventually, he went to Iowa for writing for MFA. So, so y you have you have to allow yourself to grow, and also you know that there are people who are watching you grow. Mm -hmm.